Lord, thank you so much for just all that you do. It is so important that we stop every now and then, Lord, and slow things down just to say thank you. You are an amazing God, an amazing Father, amazing King, and we are so thankful for all that you provide, things that we don't even know, we don't even recognize, things that are going on behind the scene <clears throat> that we don't even see, Lord. You are just working it all out for our benefit, and we are just so thankful, Lord, for all that you do on our behalf. We love you, Lord, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, hey, we are starting a new series today. This series is called Legacy. And this Legacy series is going to be a five-week series where we're really going to dig into this idea of what legacy is all about. So legacy in all of our lives does exist. It really does. And some people choose to not think about legacy or not talk about legacy. And some people totally understand what legacy is and understand how God plays a role in legacy. Well, during this series, our hope is, is that we can put a spotlight on legacy, this idea of legacy, and we can help all of us understand how important legacy is in our lives and why it is important and why it is important for us to understand that we should be building, continuing to build legacy in the lives that we live for future generations. Here's the deal. Our legacy began a long time ago before we were even born. God said in the Psalms that he created us in our mother's womb before we were even being thought about being created. God created us like he knew what our existence was being. Generations ago, our forefathers invested in generations to come by creating legacies that would build our world and build our lives and build and invest in our families. Legacies are built from generation to generation. And legacies come in all kinds of ways, all sorts of ways. They come in the way of good work ethic. They come in the way of spirituality or religion. They come in the way of health, like good health. They come in the way of positive, healthy relationships or a healthy family structure or in the way of finances. Legacies are things that individuals from way back in the day made a decision to say, yeah, my mama didn't have it and my daddy didn't have it. None of my family had it. So I'm going to start it today and I'm going to start having it, but I'm not going to start having it just for me. I want to start doing this for me, but I also want it to benefit the lives of my kids. And I also want it to benefit the lives of their kids and of their kids' kids. Like, it, they're, they're, like individuals who create legacy, they're not thinking about just themselves. They're thinking about like the lives of individuals to come. Like they're investing in property and investing in stocks and all of these long-term kind of things so that they exist for the long haul, not just for like a short-term period. So today I want to talk about a never forgotten past, a never forgotten past. Here's the deal. We don't start legacies over. We don't start legacies over. We stand on the shoulders of our past. We stand on the shoulders of the people who have built it, who have done the hard work, you know? And so a lot of times, like the new young bucks like to come on board or come on the scene and act as if like they just started this thing or act as if, you know, they're the new deal, the new, the new prize, you know? Um, not realizing that there have been generations upon generations of people who have invested so much time and so much work and so much hard work in building the things that exist within our world. And, um, and, and, and they have a tendency just to push it on the side, you know? Well, here's the deal. You know, we, we stand on the legacies that have already been built in our world. Any wise young person uh, should know that and should recognize that. And so when I think about legacy, I think about the legacies that uh, exist within my own family. And the thing that I thought that I would bring uh, to sort of, you know, give us a visual of that was the blocks of life. Um, anyone that knows construction knows that uh, if you want to build a really 
sturdy found, sturdy building. Uh, you can build it with blocks and boy, those blocks can, you know, really stand the pressure of hurricanes and mostly any storm that really comes against it. When families build their legacies against the foundation of blocks and build structures that are really, really designed really well, those structures really last a really, really long time. And so when I think about my family, I think about the kind of things that my family built. I, uh, there's a big funeral happening in one of the islands and all of my uh, uncles and family members went to the island for the big funeral. So they were sending pictures and all that stuff. So I got some pictures of uh, my uncles, some of my uncles here. Uh, so so these are my uncles. Look, they're all older now. They used to look younger back in the day. And they're much older now. Uh, there's Uncle Michael, Uncle Freddie, Uncle Leon, and there's my dad with the black hat on at the end. He's the cool dude. I look just like him, all that gray beard. Wow. And, uh, and so those are my uncles. Now, the thing about these guys, uh, they like to watch cowboy movies. So move to the next slide there. Um, and so that's all of them. They're falling asleep. They, they, used, they fall asleep one by one. <laughs> Uncle Freddie in the brown hat, he's gone already. And uh, the rest of them are pretty much going to go on as time goes on. Uh, so let's go to the next slide here. So this is, so growing up, this is what I watch those uncles do. They love cowboy movies. And so check it out. This weekend, they're, they're all sitting there watching a cowboy movie. It's hilarious, you know? I grew up as a kid watching these dudes uh, watch cowboy movies. And what do you know? I love cowboy movies. I mean, you come to my house, I will sit down all Saturday watching cowboy movies. And Janet just laughs at me. She's like, that is so lame. They are so, they are the worst actors in the world. I was like, Janice, if you don't get out of here, I'll shoot you down, girl. You know, I mean, I just love Cowboy movies. But these dudes are the dudes, man. I love them. We got some individual pictures of them there uh, where uh, there's my cousin Delores, there's my dad, and food is a big deal on, you know, when family gets together. And so that's my dad. There's some other pictures of Delores. That's my cousin and, and some of the other uncles. I mean, these dudes help me understand some major things in my life. When I look back at their lives, they, they created the legacy of great spirituality. Like in my family, spirituality is a major deal. When I think about the foundation of uh, what these guys created and the legacies that they created, these guys created a legacy of spirituality. So in my family, you're going to realize that my granddad, he's a, he's a pastor, preacher dude, um, who's, uh, who's of course gone and passed on now. Um, Uncle Leon also is a pastor. Uncle Michael is a minister. Um, Uncle Henry is a pastor. Uncle Freddie, um, he's a support structure. He's coming on at some point. Um, and I mean, these guys were, these are all guys who are in ministry. My great grand uncles, all ministers. My brother's a pastor. My, I mean, spirituality is a major foundation in our family, major foundation in our family. You know, the other thing that they also uh, created in our lives was the legacy of building. And so I'm not a builder. I never went to school for building, but I have this gift and skill of putting things together. And not only me, but like a lot of their children have that same kind of skill set, just automatic thing that just exists in them and just comes alive in them. If something needs to be built or put together, uh, they have this creative mind to just go to work and just do it. That's a part of the legacy that these guys invested and built in our lives. Now, if I was to tell you more stories, I would tell you a story of their dad. Uh, his name was Fred. And um, Fred uh, was a uh, builder. He was a gardener. He was also uh, a ship captain. I mean, this guy was everything. So me growing up, seeing granddad, man, he was a hard worker. Uh, his lady years, he owned a shop. And every morning he would go down to his shop and stay there all day just working the shop. And he was just a, he was just a tough guy, real tough guy, real stern, hard-faced kind of guy. But man, just establish and put in place great legacy uh, for, for our lives. And again, it wasn't like I was sitting under him as a student. I had the ability to just watch and just listen and just grow up and see how these guys did life. Here's another thing that they created in our lives. They created a, a level of pride in our lives. So, so like, like you can ask any Hinsey, 
Like, uh, there's an element of pride. Like, we are very proud people. Uh, we're not arrogant. Don't get it mixed up. There's not, we're, there's not a level of arrogance that, ex that is existing that we're talking about here. We're talking about just a level of pride. Like, we believe in who we are. Like, we know who we are. We're Hinzies, you know? And that's, that's, that's major for us because it also created another level of faith and major optimism. I am baffled, and I just thought about this after uh, you know, putting together this message, I am baffled at the amount of optimism that exists within my life and in the life of other family members that I know. And, and the reason why this is so major is because everyone experiences storms, everyone experiences trials. When I think about my family though, man, these guys in the midst of storms and trials, they were, they're so optimistic. They're so like, hey, we can push through. And yeah, it's tough. And yeah, it's hard. But, but with God on our side, we're going to be all right. And yeah, we don't know how it's going to work out. But we have faith in God. It worked out in the past. We just believe it's going to work out now. These are all major legacies that were established and created way before I was even born that continue to exist in my life today. And my hope is, is that I can continue on with these legacies, stand on their shoulders and continue to build this legacy wall in my family. And I will continue to see it existing in the life of my children and in the life of their children. We're talking about legacies. And I'm going to bring up a major point here today because we get to choose how we embrace the legacies that exist within our lives. We get to choose. Okay, so in the Bible, if you want to go ahead and turn, Genesis chapter 15. It, it starts a really cool storyline. So if you're wanting some good scripture to read in the next five weeks as we do this series, this is a wonderful set of scripture to read. It's the story of Abram, name eventually changed to Abraham, and it shows the beginning of his storyline where it talks about his dad, how his dad is a part of like a tribe, like a, you know, not a part of like relationship with God kind of deal, just a part of like a tribe serving other idol gods kind of deal. And then God calls out Abram and he begins to like, in other words, put his hand on Abram and begins to give him vision. Abram turns his heart to God and God just begins to call him away from his family, away from that stuff that they believed in to now believing in God. And God just blesses him like crazy and blesses generations to come down the road. Okay. So this is a wonderful set of scriptures to be reading like in the next five weeks, because it's a major storyline in regards to our Christian belief and what we believe and also uh, what's in the Bible and how the Bible begins. Okay. So in Genesis chapter 15, here's the beginning of the storyline where God is having a conversation with uh, Abram or through a vision kind of deal, okay? So here's what it says after these things. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, said to the Lord, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars. You are able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteous. And he counted it to him as righteous. So he believed in God. He believed in God. Okay. Now that's the beginning of the story. Here's a point that I want to make here. The plan that God has for us is given to us by God. I believe that Abram believed it. I believe that he understood it. The problem is, is that over time it wanes, doesn't it? And it obviously leaks. So every now and then we need to be reminded that it is God that gives us the plan. In other words, we didn't create it. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. The word of the Lord, God, showed up to Abram in a vision. The reason why this is so important because this prepares us for what is to come. What we're reading is the beginning of the story of Abram. As you begin to read into the story of Abram in the weeks to come, you're going to begin to realize why this point is so important. 
Because whatever shows up can really rock you and wreck you and make you forget who called you. Who gave you the vision? Who started this whole plan? You know, we've got to be reminded that God gave us the vision. God established us. God called us to do whatever it is that we're, that we're doing, that we're putting our hands to, that we're putting our minds to, that we're putting our thought to. It's God that established it. This is big because this increases our faith in God, that God leads us as we walk through the valley of shadow and death. You know, so you remember the storyline in the New Testament, Jesus is in the wilderness, but there's a, a certain part of that story is so important about the entire story. I know like he was tempted by the devil and all of that kind of stuff. But the most important part of the story is that Jesus was called into the wilderness by God. Why is this important? Because for the rest of the story. Because when the rest of the story begins to be told, Jesus can be encouraged when he's being tempted by the devil, when he's being challenged, when he's being weak, when he's feeling weak, that he was not drawn out here by himself. He was not drawn out here by friends. He was not drawn out here by his job. He was drawn out there by God, his father. And if God took him out there, God must be is going to provide for him and take care of him and help him push through whatever it is that he's going to work through. This point is so important. We can't move forward until we address it because it is so important that we understand who and what establishes everything that we stand on? God gives us the vision. God calls us. And this is major for our faith because for those of us who are children of God, okay? Totally understand there might be some of you who may not have a walk with God as yet. Just keep walking with me. But for those of us who have a walk with God and who have a relationship with God, this point sometimes can get very challenging. We can really get lost in just feeling discouraged, feeling despondent, feeling like giving up because life can get really hard and tough. But this point is just a reminder to say that God called you. He's the author and the finisher of everything that has been created and established and built up from the ground up from what you stand on. Here's another point I want to throw out, and that is we can either remember the good or the bad of the past. We get to choose. And that's the point I wanted to bring out today because I run into so many people, girl, children of God, the kids, you know, who choose to focus so much of the attention on the negative. I mean, I myself have found myself guilty in that area too, guys, you know. I mean, we can remember Abraham's bad stuff, or we can choose to remember Abraham's good stuff. We can remember that Abraham lied and said that his wife was his sister when he was afraid that the king, Ambalek, would, uh, was going to take his wife, and, and, and he was so afraid, so he lied and said that his, that his uh, wife was his sister. We can focus on that and say, well, he was just a liar. He doesn't count. No, we, we don't need to build no legacy on him. Or we can focus on the fact that he had a lack of faith, you know, and, and believing, really believing that, um, that, that God would provide for him a child, right? We can focus on his lack of faith because he had such a lack of faith. He worked that thing out to go on and have sex with Hagar and, you know, his servant slave and, and, and produced another child. Oh, he don't count. He, he, we can't follow him, you know? We can focus on all of those different kinds of things. In fact, when I think about my own personal family, my own uncles or my own dad, I can list out so many of their failures and so many of their wrongs, but I get to choose. I hear people for years upon years share stories with me about how mom or dad did them wrong. And believe me, many of the stories that they are sharing are very justifiable and very real. And the things that were done to them were very, very wrong, very wrong. But we get to choose whether we're going to allow ourselves to be stuck on those stories or whether we're going to allow ourselves to build up new stories and to live and to thrive on those new stories. 
we get to choose. We can remember that Abraham had a great faith and obedience in following the, the, the order of God to sacrifice his own son. That's major faith. We get to choose. This point is so major for us as children of God because we get to choose whether we're going to live great and joyful lives because of the past and the legacies that have been created by generations upon generations who did the best that they could do with what they had. We don't think about that part. Lack of resources, lack of money and lack of structure and Maybe their mom or dad didn't do it and they didn't have a design of what it would look like, but they did their best with what they had, you know? <clears throat> I think about my family. You know, my, my granddad, you know, he worked in the fields and on the shipyard, you know? And my grandma, she worked in the fields and they didn't have much. When we would go to their house, they, they had an outhouse and we would, you know, go to the outhouse and it was just baffling that, you know, we would go to an outhouse, use a bathroom. And I mean, that's just the way it worked. Eventually they had bathrooms in the house and, you know, they transitioned. And, you know, my dad, he grew up and I think he graduated like from the eighth grade and then learned construction and, and continued to thrive and build houses and buildings and all that kind of stuff. Eventually was called into the ministry. And I mean, but dad didn't have like, like education wasn't like the big thing in our family. I mean, no, none of the uncles or aunts or cousins like went to school to do their bachelor degrees or master degrees and for some reason dad felt called he felt called he felt that the Holy Spirit was calling him to go off and to uh to get his high school diploma and then also to go off and do his bachelor's degree and so he went off and did that he took uh me and my older brother to Nashville at the time and 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 then the rest of the family joined and later on gave gave everything up, left everything behind and, and went off and did his, uh, his bachelor degree. And from there, he jumped on and, and did his master's degree over at Vanderbilt and, and he just kept going, you know. Of course, we're kids, we don't, we don't know what he's doing, we don't know what God's doing. But, but here is God, you know, you know, unbeknownst to us, we don't even know what he's doing and what he's building. And here is God building a legacy within my entire family, starting something that had really never existed in our entire family. And from dad graduating, mom followed right behind and got her BA degree and her master's and, uh, and then they went back home and, and continued to do family. But from there, all the kids just kept on going. You know, I continued on and got my bachelor's and my master's and then my doctorate, which was the weirdest thing in the world, like me getting a doctorate. Like, I, oh my word, that's another story, you know? But it was baffling to watch how all of us just trickled right alongside them and other family members and other you know, families just continued on getting their education. I mean, dad built a legacy of what education would mean in our family. I mean, and that's just education. Individuals in your family have made decisions because maybe health issues have existed in your family. They've made a decision to say, you know, something, we're going to start living more healthier and we're not going to have future generations continue to struggle with this epidemic. You know, uh, some individuals in your family have made a decision to say, you know something, we've always struggled financially, spending recklessly on irresponsible, goofy things, materialistic things that come and go. We're gonna stop that today and we're gonna start investing and we're gonna start saving our money for long-term efforts and, and we're gonna invest in our children and help them understand the importance of building something for their families, understanding the importance of finding good mates, like looking for good character and good value in them so that they're able to build good, healthy family structure. I mean, this is all good legacy building, you know? There are individuals in your family who have seen things be so reckless, just a major wreck, who have made a decision to say, it's, it's, we gotta stop this. Too long, generations upon generations have just kept doing the same old thing, same old thing, and we're not getting anywhere. And we gotta stop. And they've made the decision to stop. And because of them stopping and creating new values and new legacies, you're here today and you're living the way you're living because of it. You know? We get to choose. 
And I know some of you are sitting in here who have been hurt by things of the past and people of the past who have not done it the right way. This message is a message to really spur you on to say, make a decision to, to lean towards healing today. You get to choose. You can start today. Make a decision to say, you know something? He wasn't the best and she wasn't the best, but you know something? She did the best that she could and he did the best that he could with what he had. And you know something? There are some great things that he is good for and there's some great things that she's good for. And let me lean into that. Boy, one of the definitely uh, areas, one of the areas that the devil definitely leans into us in is for us to always see the negative, right? For us to always see the wrong. And so if he can keep our attention and our focus on those kinds of things, how will we ever, ever go down the path of right? Never will. Here's my last point. What am I doing to add to the list of good things that legacy has given me for those in the future? So I'm standing on their shoulders, but now this is one that's sort of front and center, isn't it? What are you doing to add to this list of legacy? Like, like, what, like how are you building your blocks of legacy to add to the wall, you know? Like what will individuals in years to come be able to say about you? That you were patient and you taught them patience. You were compassionate, and because of your compassion, you taught the family compassion. You were loving, you were kind. I mean, what's the element that you bring to the table that you're able to add to the foundation of legacy that exists within your family? You are now playing a role in building the legacy wall. Is it faith? Is it honesty? Because there are integrity issues that exist within your family. Is it compassion? Because maybe, you know, family members are just too tough. Is it maybe order? Because there's just such a lack of order in your family and you feel that we need to have more order in our family. Maybe it's patience. Maybe it's a financial structure and investing in things like a budget and, you know, going to check out Dave Ramsey, you know, and raising your kids to understand the values of a Dave Ramsey and building a financial structure for the long haul, for the long term, you know? Maybe it's spirituality. Maybe you're the one that's like starting the church thing and starting the God thing. Like it doesn't exist or maybe hasn't exist or maybe wasn't something that was consistent in your family, but maybe now you get to create more, a more consistent flow and path, a better rhythm as to how God works and how spirituality works within your home and within your family. Maybe it's a more healthy lifestyle that, you know, we're going to kick the Doritos out and all the snacks and all that stuff. And we're going to start eating more fruits and we're going to start doing life from a healthier perspective. I mean, you get to start creating a new thing within your family. How cool is that? Like you get to start something new. You get to add a new block to the wall. In Genesis chapter 25, Here's what it says, now Isaac, who is Abraham's son. It says, and Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife. He was finding himself struggling with the same thing that Abraham was struggling. His wife couldn't have kids, but he prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord granted his prayer and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Isaac began to follow down the same path. Actually, even some of the bad things that he learned also from his dad. Because guess what? He also lied about his wife and said that his wife was his sister also. The storyline is amazing when you read this stuff, you know? But I mean, this is baffling. He may have practiced some of the negative, but we also see him learning some of the good legacies. He prayed to the Lord. He didn't go to some witch doctor. He didn't worry. He didn't complain. He went to the Lord who could help him with his problem and the Lord helped him. Here's the deal. When we go to God and God helps us, it communicates a very strong message. Think about your child coming to you and your child saying to you, mom, I just need your help. Don't you just love that? Now, if they ask too much, that's a problem, you know, but, but think about that. Your child coming to you and asking for help. Boy, that's a beautiful thing. He's like, come here, honey. I want to help you. Well, that's exactly what was going on here. Isaac went to God and said, God, I need your help. 
my wife cannot conceive. And God helped him. But guess what? God also was very happy that his child came to him. Didn't go to everyone else. Didn't start worrying. Didn't start complaining. His child came to him. And because his child came to him, God blessed him. So look in Genesis chapter 26, verses two through five. Here's what it says. And the Lord appeared to him and he said, do not go down to Egypt, dwell in the land of which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land and I will be with you and will bless you. For, you, for to you and your offspring, I will give all of these lands. Again, very familiar words that he said to Abraham. And I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham, your father. Verse four, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and will give to your offspring all these lands and in your offspring uh, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge my commandments my statutes and my laws and then in verse uh, uh, verse 12 of chapter 26 it says and Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold the Lord blessed him and the man became rich and gained more and more until he became very wealthy. He had possessions of flocks and herds and many servants. Here's my question. What blessings are awaiting you in your life today? But in order to receive them, you need to forgive the past. You need to embrace the positives of the past and you need to consider how you are adding to the legacy of the list that exists today. God wants to bless you, but he can't bless you because you keep focusing on the wrong stuff. Can't bless you because you're not even leaning into him. You're not even talking to him. You're not even conferring him on things that he needs to be a part of. You know, you have the ability to make that choice today. You know, building your faith in God and building upon the legacies that exist within your life. This week, you have the ability to think about your family as I was thinking about my uncles, you know, and there are so many more legacies that were created by even other family members that exist within my family. And boy, if you just stop every now and then and just think about the positive things that have been created by the families that exist within your world, you will be amazed. I think you'll also be excited and thankful for what God has done and has provided in your life. This week, I want you to think about where you are with your past. This message was all about the past and us not forgetting the past that existed within our lives. What is God wanting you to do this week in regards to forgiving the past, in regards to embracing the positives that exist within the past, and in regards to considering how you assess your life and what you're doing with your life? Are you just a complainer? Are you just worrying? Are you just crying out? And I know things are tough. Let me, let, me make sure you, let me make sure you hear me saying this. I know some of our past is tough, has been tough. I know that. And I know that some tough things have happened in the past and tough things have happened to some of, of us from the past. But what I'm saying though is, is that God is bigger than those things. And he wants to heal you. And that healing doesn't necessarily have to take place just today. But he can. But God will journey with you. And if you, if you give to him whatever that thing is, I promise you he will heal it over time. Don't give up on journeying with him. Don't give up on being optimistic. Don't give up on having an element of pride about who you are and about what you believe in. God wants the best for you. And he will take something that started off real goofy and crazy and he'll clean it up and he'll make it whole but we got to play a role in how that works out. So what is God wanting us to do about forgiving? Are there individuals in your life that you need to just forgive? That you really need to reach out to this week and say, hey, I just want you to know I forgive you. Some tough things have happened and I'm really sad about that and I just want you to know I forgive you, you know? And what does God want you to do about the whole idea of embracing your past to, yeah, I know you have seen the big problems that exist within individuals from the past, but I mean, is it possible that God wants you to also see the positives from those individuals that exist from the past, the things that they have built and 
The reason why you are standing the way you are standing is because of what they've done, the good things that they've done. And then is God wanting you to assess your life to really look at, man, how are you living? <clears throat> what are you doing? Like, how are you even putting into work, putting into practice all of the resources that I've given you? Are you just recklessly just using them? Recklessly just living them out? I mean, are you building more legacies on the wall that have continued to be established and built from generations of the past? This is one that sort of hits you right in front of your face, isn't it? Because now this is all about you. It ain't got nothing to do with the past. And now it has to do with you. How are you living your life in regards to your financial structure, in regards to your patience, in regards to your compassion, in regards to your love, in regards to your perseverance? Are you giving up too much? Like, how are you doing in those areas? You know, here's the deal. Generations of the future need us and they need us to live right and they need us to do right. And if we don't, we got to understand that we're breaking down the walls of legacy and we're destroying an opportunity for a really amazing future for what God would have them to live. So this is my opportunity to now speak to those of you who may not have a relationship with God. I don't know where you're coming from and I don't know where you're at in your life. You know, I mean, you might have been trying this thing with God for a minute. This may be your like hundredth time in a church and you're giving it just one more time. Time, You know, I really believe in the power of God's timing. I really do. I believe that if you're here, that it's not a mistake why you're here. If you're like, if you're a visitor and especially if you're a visitor who have never walked um, or developed a relationship with God or invited Jesus into your heart. I don't believe it's a mistake. I believe you're here because Jesus brought you here. I really do. And I believe that you're here because Jesus brought you here. And I believe that he brought you here because he also wants to be in relationship with you. And so here's the deal. I mean, you're here, you've been sitting, you've been listening, and it's really up to you to allow yourself to come to that place of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I mean, not just those of you who may not know Jesus, but there may be some of you who have like, like left just because of discouragement or for whatever reason, tough times. And maybe you felt like there was just a lack of faith or you just felt like things were just too hard. This is really your opportunity to say, Jesus, I want you back. But again, it's just you and Jesus. This is between you and him. I believe it is so major for us to have a true north. Like everyone gets to choose a true north. In other words, that thing that leads them and directs them and gives them life, hope, faith, all that stuff. Everyone gets to choose. Some people choose Buddha. Some people choose liquor. Some people choose drugs. The list goes on and on in regards to what people choose. We choose Jesus here at Compass. I mean, we really do. Doesn't mean like we don't have challenges with all of the kind of things that you have challenges with. We just choose Jesus to help us through whatever it is that we find ourselves struggling with. He gives us hope. He gives us strength. He gives us perseverance. When things get really tough and hard, Jesus, we call on Jesus. That's what we lean on. And I'm just saying to you, you can make a decision to do the same thing. So here's the deal. I want you to guys to uh, uh, compass people, come on and join in. If you guys would just bow your heads and all you would have to do is just pray this simple prayer. And you could just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be the Lord of my life and forgive me of my sins. I love you, Jesus. And I believe in you that you died on the cross and that you rose from the grave and that you are Lord and King. Now today, I put my faith, I put my life, and I put my trust in your hands. In your name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. But there's some other prayers I want to pray this morning also. I don't know where you're at and if you're dealing with something like healing and you're struggling with some healing issues, uh, some kind of sickness issues. And um, I want to pray for those right now 
who may be uh, dealing with anything uh, pertaining to sickness or health. Um, and if you're not, you may, you may know someone who is. And so uh, if you would just stand in the gap for those people right now, um, uh, please do so. And so if you would pray with me now for those who may need healing. So Heavenly Father, right now we come and we pray right now a special prayer, a specific prayer for those who need healing right now, Lord. Healing of the body. Lord, we pray that you heal them. We believe in faith that you can do it. And we ask that you do it right now, Lord. We ask that you touch them wherever it is that the sickness exists. We ask that you come right now in the power of your Holy Spirit that you touch right now, Lord. We also pray, pray a special prayer, Lord, against anything that is mental or anything that is emotional. Things of the past, emotional stuff, Lord. Right now, Lord, we pray for an element of healing upon their lives, that you take away all of the focus and attention of the things that are negative. Any kind of depression or despondent or discouragement that may be going on, Lord, we ask that you take it away and that you heal it right now in the power of your Holy Spirit. We know that you can do it, Lord. And we believe right now, Lord, asking that you do it. In your name we pray, amen. I want to pray a special prayer for those who may need provisions or those who may struggling, be struggling with a lack thereof. And if you'll join in and pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, you know the individuals who are struggling or who may be having a lack thereof, whether it's financial or whether it's a job. Father, right now, I just ask that your Holy Spirit speaks and ministers to them, Lord. Provide doors of opportunity. Expand their territory, Lord. Right now, I ask that you uh, provide a sense of confirmation that your Holy Spirit is present and real and that you're hearing their prayer. You're hearing their needs. You're hearing their concerns, Lord. Right now, Father, I ask that you fall afresh in this room for those who have needs or for individuals who may be standing in the gap, for individuals who may have needs. Right now, Lord, in the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, I ask that you move in a mighty way, in a mighty way, Lord. We believe in you and we have faith in you that you can do it. And we just ask that you move right now. We stand in faith as we pray to you, Lord. We stand in faith as we pray to you. And we ask, Lord, that you provide right now. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Come, Jesus.
against me shall prosper. It won't work. Oh, I won't be afraid of the arrow by day from the hand of my enemy. I can stand my ground with the Lord on my side. For the snares they have said will not succeed. Hey, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No way, no way. 